think there's an afterlife? No. Why do you say no? This is the mystery of humanity, but you have discovered that there's not one. How could that be? Well, because there's a lot of evidence that aliens from another galaxy created us, genetically. Um, well, this is an um, experiment that they watch real close. They're about 100 times more intelligent than us, so they have powers. It's going to be easy, isn't it? But they have powers that we don't even know about, I'm sure. So how do you know they've got powers we don't know about if you don't know what the powers are? Don, do you think there's an afterlife? I do. I do believe that there's an afterlife. Heaven and hell? No. Uh, I, th I think about it as more like a like different plane of existence, uh, similar to how light is composed of different frequencies, going from a lower frequency of red to a higher frequency of blue or violet. Voragey Biv, we all know that, right? Like, so if that's uh, if we're walking around in this, um, I was just thinking about this. It's, it's kind of like a, a plasma, right? Like, so if we're walking around in this, like. Fluid that we don't really like recognize would be influenced by like spin rates. Like if, if like particles at the subatomic level have a spin, like everything spins, so shouldn't that create like currents? And if there's currents, then um, maybe that's more likely to be the cause of uh, fluctuations in energy fields. And if there's fluctuations in energy fields, um, that means we might not perceive of some, right? Like we, we, we can't hear certain sounds, that doesn't mean they, they don't exist. We can't see certain wavelengths of light, that doesn't mean they don't exist. So simply because we transition from one uh, state of, 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 I guess, life or awareness, doesn't mean that... Uh, there's not another state that we can actually transcend to, into. Could you go through that again? I missed it. If you were God for a day, would you change humanity? What would you do to change things? You could do anything. Uh, get rid of poverty. Just poverty? You wouldn't worry about cancer? Uh, yes. D uh, deadly diseases for sure would be eliminated. What about hurricanes and tornadoes and floods and famines and starvation? Yes, for sure. What do you think God requires of you? Uh, live our lives uh, um, ethically. Are you doing that? Of course. You're a good person? Of course. Do you believe in God's existence? So it's it's fascinating. I feel like so if you talk if you talk about the the collective, I'll call it that. Um, in a single form, I'm like my mind is like no, that really can't like exist in a single way. Like there always needs to be a reflection in order for like, the reality to be like present. Right, like you have to reflect off of a point. If you are light, you did just you hear my out. question? No, do you think God exists? So yes or no, it'd be good. Um. So that's the thing. It's like it's not easily like encapsulated in that form. Yes, it is. Just say yes, as a creator. These things couldn't happen. Flowers and birds and trees and puppies and kittens and seasons and fruits. All these things show the genius of God's creative hand. Why do we die? Why do people get old and die? Well, I think that has to do with like the mechanism that we use for or what I call a flesh bag. I think, I think that's a, it's just a tool. So this tool that we're using, that we're walking around in this planet, um, uh, wears out over time. So... We wear out. That's why everyone dies. Everything dies. You know what the Bible says? What? Death is wages from God. The wages of sin is death. God pays you in death for your sins. Did you know that? Well, you say know that as if it's like a truth. Like it is the truth. It's the gospel truth. That's, yeah. that's it. That's it. Well, you're going to die and God's going to give you wages for your so sin. So you're oscillating at a particular frequency. This is your frequency. This is awesome. Do you think you're a good person? Have you violated God's law, His commandments? Are you a sinner? Are you pleasing to God or is He angry at it's you for your sins. It's that you're asking me to answer based on your frequency. So on my frequency, like... It's not a frequency, it's just a question. Do you think you're a good person? See, that's the sound, right? You're making sounds, that's a frequency. Well, that's how we communicate. Exactly, so we're all frequencies. Do you think you're a good person? Give me a frequency on that. <laughs> that's a judgment. Well, make your judgment. Are you a good person? I, don't, I didn't think... I thought God sat down and was writing on the ground when the guys came up and said hey could you stone this person and and god was like nah why don't you um, the person who did the first sin right like you got you caught you cast it first and he didn't even get up meaning right like so judgment right is it was a woman she had committed adultery yes, it, right and that's the that's the judgment thing he's talking about we can't judge so if you're asking me to place judgment on things i don't do that you can judge yourself nope how many lies do you think you've told in your life i don't know what if you i don't know I don't know what a lie is. Well, it's an untruth. What's a truth? <laughs> Have you ever stolen something? See, this is all, this is all fascinating. It's That's a question. Based, this is still based on a, a particular truth, right? Like it's still based on how you perceive of your, it's your universe and your reality. It's awesome. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. It's called blasphemy. It's using God's name as a cuss word. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Uh, of course not. Because you dishonor her, you disrespect her, and when you use God's name as a cuss word, you dishonor God and you anger God, and blasphemy is so serious in the Old Testament, God gave it the death sentence. One to go, and I appreciate your honesty. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? 
Of course. Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart, had sex before marriage. Of course. So I'm not judging you, but you've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, <laughs> fornicating, adulterer at heart. No wonder you don't want to believe in God, the, the biblical God that demands morality. You want to believe in aliens because there's no moral dictate. So here's the big question. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? I'm going to be innocent. Why? Because we're all forgiven. We're all sinners. So Hitler's forgiven, 11 million people, just God forgot about it? Yes. Do you know what that's called? Uh, f being forgiving. Well, it's called idolatry when you make a God to suit yourself and it's a transgression of the first of the Ten Commandments. I did it before I was a Christian. I made up a God in my own mind that was just so sweet and nice and kind and cuddly but it wasn't the, the, the God that revealed himself in Scripture as being righteous and holy. Your death will show you how serious God is about your sins and after death the judgment. And God doesn't want you to end up in hell. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Neither do I. Man, I'd hate you to end up in hell. That horrifies guess, me. Guess what else that's, uh, the Bible says? What else does the Bible say? Thou shalt not judge others. Actually, it doesn't say that. Uh, yeah, actually it does. No, this is what it says. It says, judge not, lest you be judged. It doesn't say, thou shalt not judge others. And Jesus was talking to his disciples about putting each other down. He says, why do you try and pick a speck out of your brother's eye? And there's a beam in your own eye. So he's talking about Christians judging each other. And then further on in the chapter, well, the next chapter, he says, when you judge, use righteous judgment. There's nothing wrong with making a moral judgment. So I'm trying to well, say to you... Like you have narrow interpretations of the Bible. Yes, it's very narrow, because Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And on judgment day, he will be found guilty and end up in hell justly. But God sent his son, born of a virgin, born of a woman, to suffer and die on the cross, to take the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. Then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And if you repent and trust in him, God will remit your sins and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. That's the gospel. Right. It's, it's, your, it's your reflection of the world. It's no, awesome. it's not. It's the gospel. It's awesome that, that you have this reflection, right? Like, that's the beauty. It's like an infinite number of universes. This is your universe. And I got a chance to interact with it. That's, that's a beautiful thing. Well, I think it was great that you listened. And please think about the fact you could die tonight. And if God gave you that's justice, right. you'd right be guilty. Like walking down the, walking down the That's right. So get right with God. Repent and trust the Savior. For you. Because that's, that's what you're asking me to do it for you. No, do it for you. It's your soul. It's your salvation. But you're asking. Okay, do it for me. <laughs> Great to talk to you, Don. You too. Great. Hey, I know you disagree with me, but you've been very kind and gracious to listen to me. What do you think about what we talked about? I think that uh, we're mature adults and uh, we should be allowed to discuss things like this in an um, intelligent way. So you're going to think about it? Um, of course. Okay, do you have a Bible at home? No. You can pull one down on your phone. Hey, thanks for listening to me. This has been very colorful, and you watch out for those aliens. Same to you. Now, here's something that will help you grow in your faith. Read the Word daily using this amazing one-year devotional, Jesus in Red. For more than 48 years, I've read the Bible every day without fail. I thought every Christian did that, but sadly, many don't. So get into a habit you'll never regret by reading the Word daily using this beautiful little devotional. 365 readings based solely on the words of Jesus. There's nothing like it. Get it through Amazon, livingwaters.com, or at your bookstore.